Rishi Sunak called an emergency Cobra meeting today as the terror threat in this country spirals. Having turned a blind eye to the festering hatred of Western values within this country for years now, the revelation that Britain is a more dangerous place to live in is tonight's winner of the No Sugar Sherlock Award. You reap what you sow. The Batley school teacher still in hiding, having lost his career after showing students an image of Prophet Muhammad as an educational tool. A schoolboy in Wakefield holed up in front of a kangaroo court of angry Muslim clerics attended by numpty British police for supposedly defacing the Quran. Preachers across the country in recent days calling Hamas heroes and calling Jewish people guardians of Satan and calling for the wiping out of unbelievers. Gosh, I hope that's not you and me as well. Not only have we seemingly imported an extreme ideology that hates everything we stand for in this country, tolerance, liberal democracy, the rule of law, but over the last three weekends, we've given it a sacred platform in the centre of our capital city, alongside monuments like the Cenotaph, which represents our historic battle for the values which are now being trashed. The woke left, the be kind crowd, who are much better people than you and me, have supported these marches, which this week saw some calling for a new intifada. <laughs> What's an intifada? Well, from 2000 to 2005 in the Middle East, intifada meant terror attacks on buses, in nightclubs and in restaurants, and the first widespread civilian use of the suicide bomb. This weekend, protesters backed by woke lefties called for that to start in London. The Manchester Arena bombing in 2017, where 22 mainly children were killed at an Ariana Grande concert, was an intifada. This country has gone mad. Stating a biological fact and calling a man who thinks he's a lady a man is hate speech. Under a Labour government, it might get you arrested. But climbing British monuments and calling for the eradication of a group of people based on their religion and race? Nothing to see here. I know the BBC have struggled to call baby beheaders terrorists, but I don't struggle with such language. And fortunately, we have a Home Secretary brave enough to tell it as it is. We've seen now tens of thousands of people take to the streets following the massacre of Jewish people, the single largest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, chanting for the erasure of Israel from the map. To my mind, there's only one way to describe those marches. They are hate marches. I wonder if her comments are too little too late. These medieval monsters in Hamas are sick, depraved and present an existential threat not just to Israel, but to the free world. It is rebadged Nazism and those calling for a ceasefire, which of course makes you look like a really nice person and wins you brownie points on social media is akin to appeasing Hitler as he rampaged across Europe. Hamas and Nazism are not historic parallels. They are a mirror image. The proof is that the 300,000 Jewish people who live in this country are no longer safe, nor are they anywhere in the world. Take a look at this terrifying footage of an airport in Russia where hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters descended on Dagestan airport looking for Jewish arrivals for retribution. Russia today, Britain tomorrow. Amid all the noise, here are some things which are true. Britain is a successful and brilliantly diverse society, the most integrated national population on planet Earth. Most marchers in this country and most Palestinians abhor the violence, violence and want a two-state solution. And Israel likely has a case to answer for its treatment of Palestinians over several decades. Taking sides is a fool's errand in the Middle East. But how can we live in a society where posters of kidnapped Jewish children are being torn down from lampposts around the UK? The woke left find hate and racism everywhere except where it actually is. Everyone is a Nazi, except actual Nazis. The Middle East feels very far away, but the enemy is now within. A country famous for importing tea leaves, spices and tropical fruit, 
has also imported an ideology of hate and over the last three weekends has allowed some to platform a death cult on our streets. Neither the world nor Britain are now a safe place to live and may never be again.